Let's try out Zoid, an iframes-based micro front-end framework. So Zoid is a unique micro FE framework, and it's got a unique name for sure. Every time I think Zoid, I, I don't know what it is. I think Zoinks, like Shaggy in Scooby-Doo, like Zoinks. So if you ever looked at a web page and thought to yourself, there are not enough iframes on this page, then Zoid is for you. This is because Zoid is based on iframes. And if you're asking yourself why the heck that is, so a good indication of that is you can go and see that the primary authors are from PayPal. PCI compliance is why PayPal has an interest in iframes. And PCI compliance is a set of rules around how we deal with credit card information. It means a lot of audits if your code deals directly with credit cards. So if you put your credit card code into an iframe, then you can keep revving on your site without doing all those audits. And what Zoid does is make that iframe experience into components. Now, normally I do a product detail page with a framework just to kind of compare apples to apples with other micro FE frameworks, but Zoid is really not meant for that. So what I'm gonna do is uh, an example that shows Zoid in its best light, because I think you know, that's fair. And that would be with like a credit card update form inside of an iframe. All right, so let's sketch this out. We've got a host page. We have a page that has the HTML for the component. It also has a JS file that runs the component. Both the host page and the component page include the Zoid JavaScript, and they both include a component definition JavaScript. So clear as mud? Sure, okay, cool. So let's get after it. I'll create two directories, one for the card form component and the other for the host page. Now for the card form, I'm just gonna set up NPM and parcel and React. So we'll do it in React. Now we need three files in here, an index.html and a JS for the component. And then we need that card form JS and that's, what the, that's where the Zoid component definition is going to go. So first I'm gonna build out that index.html and the JavaScript for the component. So this is a pretty simple page. You just have to have a div to mount the React component and bring in that JS. And I'll bring in Zoid from a CDN and then include that component definition JS. Now into the JS, I'm gonna create a React component that'll take a card number and have an update button. This isn't gonna make a whole lot of practical sense, but it will demonstrate how properties and events work, which is really important. And when we render this, we're gonna bring in those properties from an xprops object on the window, or, or global, which are the same. And that xprops is managed by Zoid. Now the last thing we're gonna do is create that config file. So let's go build that. This register is the component with Zoid. Now we have to give it a name and a URL. That URL is wherever the page is hosted. That could be S3 or a server, your call. For the React code, I'm gonna get that JS from the dist folder. So let's set that up in the dev script. In this case, I'm just gonna serve it off of port 8001. So let's set that up by just NPXing serve off that port. Let's just make sure that serves. And it does, that's cool. Zoinks! So now it's time to put together the host page. This is just gonna be an HTML file. I'll copy and paste in the script tags that bring in Zoid and the config.js, but tweak the URL for the Zoid config. And now down in the body, I'll create the div to hold this thing and a script to build it out. You can just run the component function that comes in from the config file and then pass it those props. And then call the render method on the return value and point it at that div. All right, let's try this out. To do that, I'll use a live code server extension on VS Code. Always love that thing. All right, looks pretty good. And it's getting that credit card value. And it puts up events. Sweet. I'll be honest, it took me a while to get to this point with it. There is copious documentation on this, but I personally found it a little bit hard to follow. And I think that's because I was thinking about it like another micro front-end framework, just like open components or a single spa. And it's, it's just not that. But what it is, as you can see, is a really easy way to make an iframe component, which if you need it, is cool. And gotta keep that sensitive credit card information out of the hands of those meddling kids. Zoid fits a very specific need though, so if you're looking just for a micro FE framework and you don't care about iframes, then I would probably look at some of the other videos I posted. Okay, a couple more Scooby snacks for you. 
If what you just want is an easier way to deal with iframes, then you should check out Post Robot, which is used by Zoid to move all those props around. That's what they say is at the heart of Zoid. And one other thing is this JSX Pragmatic Library. It's in the same GitHub org. And what it allows you to do is create DOM nodes or HTML from JSX. This is like a production version of that thing that I did in my video that created DOM nodes using JSX. It's really, really cool. It's definitely cool if you want to use vanilla JS and you want, don't want to do all those document.create element calls. All right, this about wraps it up for this one. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button or the subscribe button if you really liked it. See you next time on Blue Collar Coder. Be kind to each other. And I mean that, please.